Seattle's Pike Place Market is our nation's longest running farmer's market. It began in 1907 following the gold boom years as a place where farmers could sell directly to their customers and the markets meet the producer mission still shines in neon above its entrance today. For generations, the market has been the heart of the city. It's the place they love the most and the first place they take visitors. Underneath Seattle's passion for the market is the fact that the market is also about the making and losing of money. Since its early days, the market has been a favorite of real estate developers. Developers built its arcade and made their livings from its rents. Real estate values were at the heart of the failed plan to tear down the market in the 1960s. The story that follows is about the value of the market's buildings and who owns them. After Seattle voted to save the market, as an historic site in 1971, the Washington State Legislature created a new type of public entity, a Public Development Authority, or PDA, and Washington's first PDA was formed to rebuild and then manage the market's historic buildings in 1973. In the standard sense, you're going to develop or redevelop a piece of property, you determine what your costs are, you determine uh, what uh, the economic return you need to make this possible. You come up with equity capital to uh, make a, uh, cover a, a gap and you work with the bank or some other lender to put it together. Mm -hmm. uh, in this, we started at the opposite end and said, we're gonna t determine what the rents are, uh, which is your income stream, yeah. and then work backwards from that. The businesses that were still there when the PDA came in in 74, a lot of them were hanging on by their teeth and we're real mom and pop and, and close to going out. Ronald Reagan was elected. There was really a wholesale withdrawal of federal support for any kind of community-based or economic development-based project. Congress had earlier passed a new tax law allowing nonprofit owners of historic properties to exchange their tax credits and cash against the value of their property. There are or were uh, investment groups or investors who were in high tax brackets who needed tax write-off and, and could actually assign a value. They'd say, well, if you can give me $100,000 of tax write-off a year for five years, mm -hmm. that's worth X yep. to me. So in our scrambling to try to find means of completing the market, we had by that time I think had uh, essentially completed the core market, but we were still trying to figure out how to do the, uh, the sanitary market and uh, a few of the other market buildings. Um, and as you say, the other funds, the grant funds particularly, were running out. Mm -hmm. uh, it seemed like an opportunity that w we certainly uh, needed to pursue, um, and we did. Well, in 1983, when I was hired, there, I was hired specifically for the mandate, and there were no more outside funds that the market actually had to pay for itself. Our chief financial officer came to me and said, the market is in terrible shape, and actually usually it's bankrupt. Uh, the thing that is so hard for people to understand is that a lot of people make more money out of showing losses than out of showing profits. And so they were designed to show losses that would then lower the tax burden on uh, the individual limited partner investment. Normally, in a professional private transaction, uh, you have all of the attributes of ownership uh, in one place, and that entitles you to certain things, including the ability to manage your asset and to take whatever tax benefits are associated with uh, your ownership of that asset. So you get investment tax credits if you put money into your property. If it happens to be an historic property, you get credits for restoring the historic get depreciation of your investment over time. And what uh, what these transactions attempted to do was to separate that bundle of ownership rights in a way that would give enough of it to the private party to take advantage of the tax benefits without compromising the management authority of the and the ultimate ability to retain the asset of the PDA. PDA and Urban Group made a total of five syndication deals between 1980 and 1983 for that tax credit money, with the PDA getting $3 million up front to complete the Stewart House. 
From rehabilitation to development, the PDA asked the urban group for a proposal for the development on Western Avenue, which ultimately became the parking garage and congregate care center for frail elderly. The, the motivation for that, in my view, was rested with the change in the federal tax law. The federal tax law was revised twice, in 86 and 87. It went into effect in 89. So, and and the, one of the fundamental premises of that tax law was it established a definition, a distinction between active and passive income. Right. And active income is like salary, and most of these guys were lawyers, and although they had big salaries, they were salaried people. And all of these uh, uh, deals that they'd made around the country, they could take these losses against their active income. That was right. another tax benefit that right. they were receiving, in right. addition to tax credits, in addition to depreciation. Once the tax law changed, they then are sitting here with a bunch of things that now say, this is all passive income. You can only take passive losses against passive gains. You can no longer use those losses to reduce the income tax you're going to pay on your salary. So they then had to begin to look around among the real estate investments they had, the Pantages Theaters, the uh, et cetera, and say, do we have any of these that can make us any money? So that if we make some money off of one, then we can also take active, we can take the passive losses from the others right. against that. That's right. And their assessment was, voila, uh, the market. When the rules changed in, in flagrant bad faith, claimed that they owned the market. So three entities and organizations rushed uh, to the defense of the market. The city of Seattle stepped in. Uh, the Pike Market PDA, headed by Shelley App at the time, and Shelley is here this evening, and she's still in charge of the PDA. Peter Steinbrook uh, formed the Citizens Alliance. I remember early on in that process, I knew we were going to win that case. <coughs> I was convinced that these are two of the strongest-willed people my first reaction to the mayor after the PDA left the room is they can't do that. We <laughs> created them uh, to operate the market. So the notion that they didn't have the authority to enter into the agreements was one that Peter and I agreed on from the very beginning. Um, and so I think we did have common notion there that we didn't, weren't sure how we were going to get there. In 1990, I quit the Historical Commission and organized the Citizens Alliance to keep the Pike Place market public. And that organization was formed for that purpose, to ensure that we would retain ownership and control of the Pike Place market in the public interest. That was the real benefit of having, that was one of the benefits, I think, of having the Citizen Alliance. I think the other one, and Peter, Peter can talk about this as well, but you had the city and you had the PDA, um, government bureaucracies of, of various types and shapes, but the, the folks of the market, what really makes the market the market wasn't really a part of it until we had people like uh, Nancy Dowdy and Nancy uh, and the socios and the markets themselves. Nancy Tucker, the uh, chief person, was very involved. That this was a way of, of of dramatizing and bringing to life what otherwise was a very dry and complicated legal mess that was hard to sort right. out. But when you say Nancy Tucker is not going to be able to sell cheese in the cheese market anymore. It, it's a way of bringing it home. Right. They retain uh, you know, one of the city's uh, leading law firms to represent them. They also retain uh, you know, probably the most powerful political public relations firm to help them. And they were positioning the market to look like a badly run <laughs> operation uh, that they could uh, then represent themselves as uh, effectively saving by trying to do uh, what they were doing. And they went around to the editorial board, and they were actually beginning to make uh, some progress on that. Erwin Traeger of Seattle's Bogle and Gates law firm led the Urban Group's legal and public relations effort. He asserted to a state Senate Finance Committee that the Urban Group purchased the market as an investment. The Associated Press reported his belief that the agreements were fully understood by PDA officials as outright sales of real property. There was no intention of either party returning the property someday to the PDA. You came to the city when I was the, uh, you and, and Jerry and uh, Mike Carroll came to the mayor's office 
at the point where they had refused to allow you to cut the sky bridge. I recall very clearly that uh, Mayor Royer's uh, reaction and mine immediately was, you have to tell everybody about this. Nobody will be able to take away the market if you tell everybody that it's under this kind of threat. It was hard to understand who was right. Public meetings ran long and hot. It's mine, it's yours, and you're yours. Go home and mind your own business. We are not here to raise rents. A lot of people have complained that we bought the market. And I think the proper perspective is somebody sold us the market. After months of public posturing and press conference wrangling about audits and management, the PDA started suit to nullify the syndication contracts. The Citizens Alliance and the City of Seattle joined the suit. Halloween Day, uh, when Judge Sullivan issued his most significant uh, ruling. Uh, he had previously issued that uh, he denied their, their receivership, but he had put us on a real short string that they had to approve uh, any leases longer than a year and things of that sort. After months of courtroom maneuvers, the four parties to the lawsuit agreed to a settlement. He had to figure out how to finance the settlement in a fashion that would not increase tenant rents for the purpose of paying the settlement. That ended up leading to, and this is also a great market story, uh, uh, another footnote of this, that ended up leading to a million and a half dollar uh, appropriation. state appropriation right. that uh, the leadership on which came from Helen Summers, right. who was the legislator for this district at the time and chair of the capital committee, but we had farmers from across the state calling their representatives in support of uh, that state appropriation as part of saving the market. One of the things that came with that was a state historic easement so that we, that right. had to do right. with maintaining the right. physical oh, yeah. qualities of the uh, market over the long term as well. The other agreement that we made was that within a date certain, we would review and take up the charter, and the only provision was in the agreement was that it would provide that this could never happen again. And then the third thing that we uh, had an agreement on, and I'm still paying for storage for this, is that the documents of this would be assembled and would be forever available uh, um, to whomever. And there are mountains and mountains of boxes.
and those were our goals, which we tried very hard not to steer from, and we, I think, were successful. There was concerns also that we not impose such re restrictions that the market couldn't uh, finance its long-term maintenance and other needs. Uh, so it was difficult finding just the right language. And ultimately, we weren't able to reach consensus in, in the market communities involved. The, the mayor finally took uh, all the various uh, arguments and, and language uh, drafts and, and uh, extracted from that and, and ended it uh, by making the re revisions directly. Uh, the, the which, I, which I think just illustrates again how, how I think you can overuse this word, the courageous the people were who stepped forward. Very small, you know, people on very small margins who still felt this was the right thing to do and uh, really helped make a difference in, in terms of where the market ended up. It was, the citizen, uh, uh, the alliance role was absolutely essential to our success and it's important to note that that was a volunteer effort and, uh, similarly, uh, the PDA Council uh, deserves mm -hmm. an enormous amount yeah. of credit for citizen service above and beyond the call. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Jerry and Stuart uh, provided incomparable leadership. The settlement sealed the new PDA charter from the mayor, returned the market to status quo. Contentious, vibrant, and still the heart of Seattle.